Hey everyone, this is Heidi. Welcome to my channel, My Reading Life, and I'm here to start a reading vlog for the weekend. It is Saturday morning, um, January 19th at about 9 a.m., and I have a three-day weekend, and I figured I would uh, do a little bit of reading this weekend, trying to get myself jump-started this year. It's been a slow year so far for reading. And we're planning to be up at our camp on a lake in Maine, and it's supposed to snow really bad tomorrow. Um, forecasted to get 12 to 18 inches of snow, so I figured what better time to have my own little readathon. Um, so let's look at what I plan to read this weekend. So here are my stack of books. Uh, the first one is uh, Wild Geese by Martha Ostenso. This is my buddy read with Sean, and it is um, going really well. I'm over halfway through it now, and I'm going to try to read at least four chapters of this, um, probably more. It will be four ch two chapters Saturday, two chapters Sunday, and then maybe two chapters Monday, or one, something like that. Um, and then my buddy read with Alba. Over at Cereella, we are doing The Man Who Mistook His Wife for a Hat and Other Clinical Tales by Oliver Sacks. This is a nonfiction, and um, I will be finishing up part one today on Saturday and then continuing on with it the rest of the weekend. Put that one to the side. Um, this is my Grant biography, and you can see I am over 400 pages into it, and I would like to make a serious dent in this this weekend. Um, I also have my December issue of The Atlantic, which I've only read a few articles in. And then starting on Monday, I'm starting this book with Doris over at All D Books. This is The Court Dancer by Kyung Suk Shin. And it is historical fiction set in Korea. Um, and yeah, so going to read on Monday at least um, the first part. This is divided into parts as well. I'm going to read part one in this by Monday. So those are the books that I'm going to be reading this weekend. Wish me luck. Hey guys, Saturday night and about uh, 6.30 or 7 o'clock and I have had a pretty good reading day. I have read um, the first part in The Man Who Mistook His Wife for a Hat. And this is a collection of um, short chapters, each about a different case study uh, that Oliver Sacks is either been a part of as a, a physician or has read about or heard about and it goes through different neurological conditions some of which most of which I had never heard of before um, and they're really great he does get into a bit of medical jargon at times and I've had to look up some words I didn't know but overall the stories themselves the case stories of the people involved themselves um, are really fascinating you know one case study about a man who, um, while he was in his 50s, thought he was in his early 20s, had basically lost his memory of his whole adult life after he was after he left the service after the end of World War II. Um, just lost all that due to uh, damage to parts of his brain from alcoholism. Um, and other just different case studies like that and some very very rare so super interesting really enjoying this one I also read two chapters in um, Wild Geese which is a historical novel set in Western Canada um, in the early in 1925 or right thereabouts uh, following a family um, on a farm in the prairie and uh, a very controlling dad who is trying to keep his thumb on his wife and his children in order to keep them on the farm and keep them working. Very much enjoying this story as well. So that's where I've gotten today and um, I'm just put my finger over the camera. I'm really bad at this vlogging business. <laughs> uh, so that's where I've gotten today and um, hopeful to get a lot more reading tomorrow and probably give you some footage tomorrow of our major snowstorm which is supposed to be hitting uh, late into the evening tonight and through the day tomorrow. So we'll see how that goes.
Hey everyone, it's Sunday night and I have survived the storm. It wasn't nearly as bad as the weatherman said it was going to be typical. And uh, got a quite a bit of reading done in between lots of games of Scrabble and some football. So I did read part two of this one. Um, been doing a lot of tabbing it up. And enjoying it. I read another two chapters in Wild Geese and uh, some exciting dramatic developments have happened so getting down to the end on this one should be finishing this up this week and then my grant biography and I read 100 and 12 pages of this one today, so I'm feeling really positive about that. That's uh, a lot of good progress. Just finally gotten to the point where Grant has accepted Lee's surrender of the Army of Northern Virginia. So getting to the end of the Civil War, I'll show you my bookmark. This is one of my favorite ones. <laughs> And uh, still have one more day off tomorrow and hoping to get some more reading done then. I'll check in with you tomorrow. Starting this one with a lot of trepidation this morning. I hope I like it. Here goes nothing. So our snowstorm turned into an ice storm. So everything is covered in ice. And I'll try to show you that I am walking on top of the snow because this is all crusted over. I'll try not to fall down. It's really a mess out here. This is a doorstep. You can see the ice on it. So we didn't get all the accumulation the old weather forecasters had talked about because we were close enough to the coast that it switched over to freezing rain and sleet halfway through the day and the wind just howled so it blew what did snow all around and you can't really tell except that everything is just covered in this layer of ice. Let me get over here closer to this tree and see if you can see it. Right here. Anyway, it's nasty. You'll just have to take my word for it. Hi, Ellie. Hi, Ellie. We're going home. When your door is iced in, <laughs> you can't open it. <laughs> Life in Maine, people. Life in Maine. Hey, everyone. It's Monday night. End of my three-day weekend, sadly. Um, and I would say it's been quite successful. I have gotten a lot of reading done all weekend. Um, basically gotten done what I wanted to get done and maybe even a little more. So today on Monday I finished um, two chapters of Wild Geese by Martha Ostenso and I'm very close to the end here. Sean and I are going to take it slow, two chapters a day for the rest of the week, going to finish this one off. Um, again, very much enjoying this historical fiction that takes place in Canada and uh, it's really a beautiful novel. I don't know what else to say. Just loving it. And then also I've gotten quite a bit read of The Man Who Mistook His Wife for a Hat by Oliver Sacks. I finished part three this afternoon. Um, and you can see all my 
little tabs where I've been marking things to talk about with Alba. These um, series of case studies of different neurological disorders, super fascinating. This is an older book. Um, this particular copy that I have was published in 1998, but some of the individual pieces were published earlier than that, even back into the 60s. Um, and it, so Oliver Sacks, oh, Oliver Sacks has um, sort of pulled them all together into this collection. Uh, but super fascinating, lots of interesting things about um, how the brain works and uh, how people compensate um, when, the, when their brain doesn't work as expected. And then um, this morning I started The Court Dancer by Kyung Suk Shin and this is a historical fiction that takes place in um, the late 1800s in Korea. A French diplomat is um, sent to Korea to open up uh, basically dialogue, diplomatic dialogue between Korea and France for the first time as Korea has been isolated, uh, has kept itself isolated from the rest of the world. And uh, this is a story of the relationship that he forms between with uh, a court dancer by the name of Jin. And I started this book with some trepidation, as I said earlier, because I had heard some reviews on BookTube um, where I questioned whether or not this book was going to be for me just because of some of the language. And in fact, the first chapter, I was like, oh no, this is going to be bad. Like... I used to read a lot of romance novels, and so purple prose is no, I'm no st stranger to purple prose, but you don't expect it in a literary fiction book. But after getting past that first chapter, um, it got more into the story and less into sort of description of the characters and more into the political intrigue of the Korean court. Um, and it's much better. So I've read 100 pages in The Court Dancer today, and I'm very much enjoying it. Every once in a while, there'll be some descriptive um, scenes put in here. And when this author describes the court dancer, Jin, <laughs> it's really over the top and kind of ridiculous. So I hope that's kept to a bare minimum and we mostly focus on um, what's going on with the court <laughs> intrigue and only a little bit on the... Uh, over-the-top descriptive things so that's where I'm at with that so it's been a great weekend um, lots of uh, reading got done so I count that as a success and I'm gonna wrap this vlog up here and try to put it together tomorrow night and hopefully it's not too ridiculous <laughs> fingers crossed all right guys I'll talk to you later bye